Good morning, it's Dr. James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and well. So this morning, I wanna apologize right up front because this message is long overdue. You know, about a year and a half ago, when the whole experience of the COVID-19 started to kind of come in, and we started to realize it wasn't gonna go away anytime soon, and we really started to understand how many things that we were missing. And I talk very openly about how many things and people that I was missing, people that I lost while I was not able to travel and see those people and uh, say goodbye the way that I would have loved to have said goodbye. And we talked a lot about inflammation, inflammation from the stress and the anxiety and how a lot of the inflammation caused by just not being able to be connected with people we love in its relationship to a particular compound called oxytocin. I know you've heard of it, it's called the hug hormone, the cuddle hormone, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, when we actually are with people that we love, when we're with people that we trust, when we can just have an awesome, awesome hug, we are just like, <laughs> it's like, phew. oh my goodness, we're marinating in this and it's so good for us. It, um, this is really cool. This is all about the fact that when oxytocin is flowing in us and as us and all around us, and now that we're having the opportunity to hopefully, mindfully start to move back into the embrace of life, engaging with people that we love, being more in that space of, I love it, inclusion, community. Oh my goodness, this is good. It's for your heart. It helps to lower inflammation. It has amazing properties in relationship to helping you navigate mental and emotional health and stress so you can do it with the level of resilience of an empowerment. And what's really amazing too, it's all about building love and trust. So yes, we have certainly been challenged this last year plus keeping our oxytocin levels up strong. So <laughs> better late than never, I am gonna share with you how this love hormone, this beautiful compassion compound is built beyond just hugging. Because here's what's really cool. While we were missing all this time together, we probably were still doing a lot of the things that can actually help us produce oxytocin. And yes, the association of longevity and vitality is amazing. And what's really cool, there's 10 things that you can begin doing again or engage with with a greater level of intention. Because I'm a big believer, when you do something with intention, it actually augments the productivity and the levels that we're trying to create in the first place. So let's be beautifully intentional and let's be present while we do this because presence that much more helps to augment those stores of oxytocin. Number one, yes, hugging, kissing, and cuddling. So that's an awesome prescription, right? Number two, words of encouragement. Now this is beautiful because we may say, well, I, I, I couldn't do those things because I wasn't with people, but it happens over the phone, it happens on a Zoom, it, it happens with FaceTime, oh my gosh. So that is all about what we can be doing now more and more and more than ever, words of encouragement raising the oxytocin being a good listener this one this way <laughs> my gosh oh don't you just know there is such a good opportunity right now for more listening rather than talking and yes as here i am just yakking away here but um i really do my best when i'm out in the world i've learned so much about things that i believe in things that i value things i want people to know about and really understanding the power of listening to help bring closeness and inclusion and helping to kind of knock down the us and them mentality and those walls that seem to kind of uh, get forged and maybe more than ever this past uh, year plus seem to get forged to an ever greater level. So being a good listener, you don't always have to be in agreement, but listening helps to kind of move some of the energy the other way and then we can have a conversation. Okay, that's beautiful. Number four, smiling and laughter. Yes, I think I... <laughs> <laughs> I am like, as I'm reading that, I'm going, oh, I think you do pretty good, James, in that area. You are a smiler. I got all these teeth and they need a space to breathe. And uh, that's why my mouth opens up and I'm a laugher. Man, I do everything I can to find reasons to laugh in spite of so many things that are happening that are, ha that are heavy and sad. There are reasons and there are places and there are things that we can do to help bring that forward. Number five, meditation and prayer beautiful. We can be doing that all along and all along this past year and a half. And now what a great time to bring more intention and intensity into that meditation. Be all in on that. Number six, sweating. I love to say sweat your prayers, 
be very intentional. The, when we get a chance to move our bodies and break a sweat, we, I believe that is just effervescent gratitude coming out of our skin, cleansing, opening, vitality giving, and yes, building oxytocin. Number seven, crying. That one I have also mastered. I am a crier. My kids, my wife are always saying, gosh, you, <laughs> good commercial. And I am like floodgates. And I, I've learned that it's a beautiful quality. It is detoxifying. It helps to keep me soft, which um, as I get older, I love getting softer. It's beautiful. Number eight, being a giver, a volunteering, just someone who knows that paying it forward, using kindness as your tool of transformation is powerful medicine and oxytocin. Creativity. Interesting enough, a study that was done on artists, people who perform, and not necessarily professionals, people who are like, okay, they're, they're an artist, this is what they do, but actually just doing any kind of art form lifts your oxytocin. So there you go, artist in you, waiting to come out of you. And number 10, yes, pet cuddling. I love the idea and every night, and my goodness, I am crazy about our dogs and I literally get down next to them and I rub them and I talk to them and I'm just going, oxytocin is just, just <laughs> coming in. And one that I didn't write down, but I want you to know about because we talk a lot about epigenetics, which is basically how uh, we can live above our gene expression by doing certain lifestyle choices, making certain commitments on our self-care and how that can help us to genetically modify our expression for more health and vitality. And one of the great ones there for helping us to do that, and it's also really good for oxytocin, is forgiveness. And I think, um, I, I think we've learned a lot this past year and a half. I hope we have. I know certainly I'm learning so many things. And one of the things I've really been so much better with is this whole idea of self-forgiveness. I, I, I think for a lot of people who've gone through different things in their younger life and um, weren't necessarily on their game when they were a child or even an adolescent, early 20s, before you started going, oh my goodness, you know, uh, spirituality is going to be my, my new drug of choice. And in that, it's like a self-forgiveness opportunity to really celebrate the changes, the transformation, the new way that you're living and leading your life. So... Practicing self-forgiveness is amazing for oxytocin. It's beautiful for gene expression. And studies do show it's one of the most powerful things that we can do to unravel a lot of the baggage that we don't want to carry anymore. So, oxytocin. Let it flow. Let it grow. And yes, we are alive to the degree that we serve. So let's serve out loud with love and passion. Much love to you. Many blessings. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.